Hello, my name is Andrew Hodgson and welcome to my YouTube channel where in 10 minutes or less, we talk about life, faith, and what it means to be a follower of Jesus today. If that's the kind of thing you like and you need more of in your YouTube life, then consider subscribing. This is part one of a two-part video series where I'm talking about millennials, why we're so awesome, and what I believe to be our generation's greatest strength. Today's video goes out to all my millennials. Now, if you don't know, millennials are anyone born roughly between 1980 and 2000. So if you fit that description, this video's for you. Fellow millennials, we have all heard the negative characteristics that make up who we are. We hear it at work, at church, we hear it online, in the news and statistics. We even hear other millennials complaining about millennials. Some say we're lazy, disrespectful, entitled, we don't know what real hard work is or what it looks like, and we're basically children trapped inside of these grown up millennial bodies. Okay, I'm half joking, and I actually believe that the narrative on our generation is changing. But what I wanna do is take some time to talk about what I believe to be our generation's greatest strength and why. In spite of all those other negative characteristics that others believe we have, we do have one defining characteristic that I believe is wildly powerful. So powerful, in fact, that I believe every generation can and will benefit from it. Simon Sinek, an author and speaker, said one of the marks of the millennial generation is that they believe that what they do matters, or at the very least, they want to do something that matters. Roxanne Stone, editor-in-chief at Barna Research Group, said, Throughout our research on millennials over the years, they have demonstrated a consistent desire to make an impact on the world. An intelligent group study showed that 64% of millennials would rather earn $40,000 a year doing something they loved rather than $100,000 a year doing something they thought was boring. To summarize, meaningful work is very important to us and we wanna do something that matters. Simply put, we want to be world changers. Now some criticize this belief while pointing their fingers at us and calling us narcissists, but I believe not only is this belief that we can change the world a good thing, it's actually a biblical thing. In Luke 11, one of Jesus' disciples comes to him and he says, Lord, teach us how to pray. Jesus then teaches them what has become known as the Lord's Prayer and it starts like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer is a prayer to change the world. It's impossible to see God's heavenly kingdom realm come to earth without seeing a change in the world. Then in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus gives us what has become known as the Great Commission. It says this, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you to do. And surely I will be with you even to the very end of the age. Making disciples of all nations? That kind of sounds like making an impact on the world. And then we read in 2 Corinthians 5.20 that as followers of Jesus, we have become ambassadors of him. And what do ambassadors do? They represent the kingdom or the nation they are from, representing the values and the culture system everywhere they go. So if we really believe that God wants his kingdom to come to earth and that we actually are his ambassadors, then I'd suggest we have to believe as followers of Jesus that we have been designed to change the world. So perhaps while we do have a great deal to learn from the generations who have gone before us, our leaders and elders, I'd suggest we might just have something to teach them about in the world changing department. So millennials, yes, we do have a deep seated desire to change the world. And this is largely due to the way that we were raised in the cultural landscape that we grew up in. But for those of us millennials who are followers of Jesus, I'd suggest that we should be feeling this even more. Why? Because now as father, God's sons and daughters, we've been given a new nature. We've been restored in our relationship with him. We've been committed mission to bring heaven to earth, we've been filled with the Holy Spirit, and we've been invited into a co-laboring partnership to see it happen. So never feel bad when you have that feeling deep inside that says, I was born for something greater. And don't back down when other people point their fingers at us and call us narcissists, because you were born for something greater. We all were. We were born to partner with God in heaven to see his kingdom established here on earth. Now let's pause really quick because I'm not trying to create a riff or a generation divide. I'm not trying to create an us versus them mentality. 
See, every generation has been born to change the world, but according to studies like those done by Barna, it seems like us millennials actually believe we can do it. So let's try to find a way to work with other generations, those who are older than us and who have gone before us and those who are gonna follow in our footsteps. See, every generation has something to offer, but I'd like to suggest that one of the things we millennials have to offer is that deep-seated belief that we can change the world. In Romans 8, 19, Paul writes this, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. All of creation is waiting to see what we, God's sons and daughters, are going to do. Creation is a longing for us to be world changers, to partner with God to see his kingdom come to earth. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like part one of why millennials are awesome, go ahead and smack that like button. And I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Part two will be up next week. And if you don't want to miss it or any of my other videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you stay notified every time there's a new video. See ya!